You can hold it. Youngins are really starting to get on my damn nerves. He's a perverted nonsense. <laughs> He's a Georgia high school coaching job influencer. His favorite Bible verse is Jesus wept. He's the man of constant sorrow, Chris Bam. Sun Coaches Podcast would like to thank our sponsor, Vertical Rays. Elevate your program's fundraising this season with Vertical Rays. Vertical Rays is the premier online fundraising platform for organizations of all sizes using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money and less time with your local fundraising coach, who works with you every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser for your program. To find out more, reach out to Justin Kilpatrick at justink at verticalrays.com or follow at Vertical Rays, capital G, capital A, on X. Justin Kilpatrick is a territory sales representative. His number is 229-860-0057. Again, you can reach him at Justin K at verticalrays.com. Justin is a good people. I've met him at a golf tournament this summer, and um, he's done a lot of good work for a lot of programs over the state. Uh, reach out and see what he can do for your program. Welcome to Sun Coaches Podcast. And tonight, got a good buddy of mine. He had a fantastic year this past year, but he spent the better part of over a decade building up a great program at Telfair County. Coach Matt Burleson, thanks for being with us tonight. Hey, I appreciate you uh, inviting me to be on the podcast this evening. Well, Coach, I know uh, – You've been there for so long, I don't think people realize how long you've spent at this one place, but where did you start off and grow up and really start uh, your journey? Well, uh, I'm originally from Florida. I'm son of a of a coach my, myself here. My dad was a 37-year veteran um, all throughout uh, high school, mainly the panhandle, but uh, I played for him at Donellan High School just outside of Ocala. Florida, you know, any any Gator fans out there is the home of Ernie Mills. Um, so, well, Georgia fans probably remember him, too. He's a pretty good one back in the day. But um, so I played for my dad there and um, you know, obviously learned a lot from him. And, you know, if he was still alive, he'd he'd probably still be coaching. He'd still be coaching. And uh, he was uh, he was alive uh, my first year here at Telfair. So that was fun. Uh, you know, he got to – come to just about every game and and um and see me coach and things like that so i was uh not only was it a special being first year head coach but also getting to to share and enjoy that with my dad but uh so i played at Donellan high school uh got an opportunity to to play in college for a few years played at uh wake forest university more so you know those guys you see on saturday signaling in the plays and and hold up the clipboards that was me uh <laughs> over there over there on the sideline we had some some really good ones and uh, and uh, played for Jim Caldwell. Uh, learned a lot from him and his staff. He's a great young man, uh, well, not young man. He's an old man now, but he was a great one to to learn and be a part of. And then um, got to my senior year and wanted to to play, and so I transferred to the University of Tennessee Martin and and played there. And if you, if you don't know where that's at, that is literally in the northwest corner of Tennessee. Um, about 15 minutes from Missouri, uh, 15 minutes from Kentucky. Um, if you blink, you will miss it. But uh, met a lot of um, lifelong friends there. Um, best man in my wedding, who's now a college football coach, um, you know, play with him there. So uh, a lot of, lot of great times, great memories there. Um, graduated from there. Um, and then was a um, intern assistant with the University of Georgia with Coach Rick, his first season there. Uh, connection there was uh, Dr. John Eason. Uh, he was a great one. He was uh, one of our neighbors in Tallahassee when my dad was a coach in Tallahassee. Uh, so I knew all the all the Florida State uh, coaches, kind of grew up right around them and, and uh, you know, got up to know all of them real well. So got to work with there, got to work the receivers, uh, you know, help out Coach Bobo. Hey, whatever they need, you know, if they needed some drinks, you know, you need a coffee, you need me to run and get your food, I'm your guy. So, um, you know, it was uh, it was a it was a great learning experience. It was a great staff to to just be a part, sit there in the back uh, and listen on to a lot of 
a lot of great coaches, a lot of great minds, and anything you've heard great about Coach Rick, it's all true. It's yeah, all I had a uh, Brad Smith on last week, the other day, and he ga uh, strength and conditioning, mm-hmm. and for Coach Rick, and he was talking about what an awesome. I said, well, you know, he's one of the most well thought of humans out there in the business, and he was talking about how anything you've ever heard is true and that how how great he was as far as building relationships with not just players but just everybody that's that's right you know um and you know here i am just uh just graduated the only connection i have is coach Ethan, and you know he was he was very nice and and helpful to me um just you know coming out of college but uh i did that for a year and then i ga'd at georgia tech it's kind of funny flopping over from georgia georgia tech um, over there with Coach Gailey, his first the first two years, I uh, um, I did some operations GA and did some recruiting GAing, and then finished up doing some some defensive GAing. But uh, the key there, you know, I met a lot of great people, had a great time. But uh, I met uh, the great Butch Brooks, uh, mm-hmm. long time uh, giant in high school football, Washington Wilkes. He was a assistant for a long time at Valdosta, but he was the director of football ops and the high school relations guy there for a while. So got to know him. Um, so many great stories could share with him, but he was a big mentor of mine and um, just learned so much from, from him about not, not X's and O's, but just, you know, how to be a coach and, um, Know how to run things, how to do things, and stuff like that. Learned a lot from him, and, and he was really good taking a um, a young coach under under his wing and and teaching him those things. So did that, and then I decided uh, after those three years, I wanted to be a high school coach. You know, like I said, I saw I saw it through my dad growing up, and um, not that I didn't enjoy college, but I just felt like I could have a bigger impact on the young kids' lives at the high school age as opposed to the college. So decided to get into the high school football, and I worked at Wheeler High School in Marietta my first year out under uh, Chuck Goddard, another great one. Yep. Um, very successful coach, and now he's over at Blessed Trinity over there. Uh, first job <laughs> – a PE major, and they said, you're going to teach self-contained EBD, Algebra 1, World Geography, and uh, <laughs> Government Economics. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, what? And uh, Ooh, here's your books, wait. here's your teacher's editions, uh, have fun. No, I'll tell so, you what they did, because I was going to mention this for people listening. Yeah. If they're not paying real close attention, went to Wake Forest, GA'd at Georgia Tech. Oh, this guy's smart. <laughs> and they're going, oh, he can handle this. <laughs> He's yeah, the smartest so, guy in the building. He can handle these guys. Yeah, that that was the good thing is uh, I may have not known what they're doing, but the good thing is they didn't either. <laughs> but, but um, I, you know, I had a very small classroom. It was probably like six or eight kids. And These are the people, know, these are the kids that nobody could do anything with and didn't want anything to do with probably. Right, you know, they figured young, you know, young football coach or whatever, he, he'll be fine. He can handle them or whatever. Didn't have a clue about writing an IEP or <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> had to learn that on the fly. But uh, probably you know, love those with, kids. Probably got along great with them. Well, you know what? Never had an ounce of problem out of any of them. You know, um, we got along great. I don't know how much algebra I taught them, um, <laughs> but there were no behavior problems or anything like that. But had a great time there. And then, then right there around that time is when my dad got sick with cancer. So I wanted to move closer to him. So. I moved down to the coast as close as I could. I wanted to stay in Georgia, but as close as I could get to them. Um, job open at uh, Glen Academy with Rob Ridings, uh, you know, another um, uh, story coach in there and, and learned a lot from them. And Jeff Cannon, who you had on earlier, uh, he and I were there at Glen Academy. Really? Uh, yeah, we were there together at the same time. Jeff and I are great friends. Uh Funny story on that. Jeff, Jeff actually uh, probably saved my life while we were <laughs> down there. Me being one of the uh, only single coaches on the staff, um, I was in the middle of which I thought I just had food poisoning. I was in the middle of a uh, 
emergency uh, appendicitis. Um, I just thought I had food poisoning or something, so I was just going to call in. I said, call Jeff to get the old sub finder number, and he's like, man, you sound terrible. I said, man, I feel terrible. <laughs> and uh, he's like, you want me to come get you? I said, no, nah, I'll be fine. Well, apparently he decided to come get me anyway because he found me passed out in my in my condo and and rushed me to the hospital and and uh, they had surgery on me right there in the middle of the night and got all that cleaned up. But you know, if Jeff wouldn't have came and got me, I I might not have uh, you know been around the next morning. So I always tell his his players at uh, at Brantley County what a well now he's at Coosa, but uh, you know what a fine coach they have and everything. He's a great human being, but um, so, you know, he's kind of one of those lifelong friends. We try to get together, you know, once a year or whatever, along with some other guys that we were tight there. I was there for a few years there working on the offensive side of the ball. Um, I knew I wanted to be a head coach one day, and I felt like I needed to um, learn the defensive side of the ball a little bit better before I started going after head coaching jobs. So, through my connection with uh, Butch Brooks, I took the defense coordinator job with Don Norton over at Johnson County, which another, um, yep. you know, giant in Georgian high school football. So I, I've had the opportunity to work under a lot of great coaches from my from playing for my dad, uh, Jim Caldwell playing under him, and then Chuck Goddard, uh, Rob Ridings. Um, you know, Don Norton here, learning under Butch Brooks, under Mark Rick, um, you know, Chan Gailey, all those guys. So I was with Don for um, for four years, and then the job came open at Telfair County in 2012, and we took that and um, have been here ever since. And um, it's been a it's been a tough row. You know, we uh, it was one of probably one of the probably not one of the best programs in the in the state, they were, they were pretty bad. Um, and in one of the toughest regions at the time was Charlton, Clinch, Irwin, Wilcox, Turner County, um, Lanier County, Atco, you know, all those, which have just about everybody in that region had won a state championship at some point. <laughs> um, so trying to get the program turned around in that region, um, was a, was a really tough task. And I, I remember my very first spring, we couldn't even take a handoff, and uh, I remember, I remember calling my principal, asking, "What in the world did you get me into um, <laughs> over here?" But uh, um, stayed the course, and you know, kept our head down. Has had some great assistant coaches over the years. Got a great staff now, and um, we've come a long way. We've just finished up year twelve, and we've been to the playoffs four times in twelve years, which hasn't ever happened before and we just made a run to the to the semifinals which has never happened before so the last two years you know we've been real successful and it's obviously we've had some good players but we've got some great coaches and it just uh you know it's been it's been great enjoying all the i guess all the hard work and the the blood sweat and tears that we've we've put into it as a as a family and as a staff over the last 12 years because we we uh we got here when my little girl was six months old and she just just turned 13 like we we're talking about yesterday so it's uh it's crazy all she knows is is mccray georgia she she i think she thinks the statue of liberty is in mccray georgia. <laughs> yeah i was about to say and y'all got a little statue of liberty and that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah that's what I, think. I think i think some of the kids if you ask them in history class they might think it's in mccray georgia well there is one there you have one that's right and there's a really but, good no, restaurant out there. What's that place that's out? Well, it's, we've got Cedar Lane, which is the supper club out there, yeah. kind of on the outskirts towards high school. Uh, Southern Star is always a good one. Then we got a couple newer ones that are smaller with the uh, Willow Creek and the Chicken Box, which uh, just kind of some some locals. But, man, it sure is some good cooking. Yeah, Cedar Lane, That's uh, we rode – some another couple wanted to go out to eat with us one night, and we rode out there and – we get out there, we're all fired up. We're like, yeah, this man, this is a good place. You get out there, it's on the lake or, or you know, pond or whatever it is, and get out there, and it was closed. <laughs> it's only open, you know, three nights. <laughs> yeah, Thursday, week. Friday, Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> we found right. out there on like a Tuesday. I was like, dope. <laughs> yep. But, but yeah. it's funny, uh, we talk about Cannon, that story he told. I was listening, I was telling him we're talking about that story he told where we had the huge 
ginormous brawl in the middle of the locker room. I was there for that. I, I remember that. We talk about that all the time of how how crazy and probably didn't realize it at the time how da- dangerous it was. But uh, that, w- that was a true story right there that he told on that one. Yeah, you're sitting there going, if that happened. Yeah, I was, yes, yeah, I was that, like, yep, that, yep, sure and, did. And th- that was like that. Yeah, man, there's been a lot of great places. I know I had Bob McAllister on, and, and you've won now. You've done things there that he was the last person to win there, you know. like Yeah, it's uh, – And that's it, a long like time Like I said, ago. last couple of years, you know, we hosted the first playoff game in 30 years and won the first one in 30 years, and, you know, we made a – it was really cool. You know, you know, obviously coaches that have done it before to to be practicing on that Thanksgiving week where nobody's on campus but you and – there's just something something special about practicing on that Thanksgiving week. You know, it was it was a memorable not only for the kids but for the coaches and the community. And then we played Macon County, who was um, third in the state at the time, and it was it was so slammed. It was such a great atmosphere for small town high school football, and our kids played so well. And and you know when we uh, you know won that one, and then of course we ran into the bus all over there in Manchester. Um, but like I said, we our whole community made that travel all the way up to Manchester in December. You know, it was, it was a packed house there standing room only. So it's a, it was a great memory, not only for us as coaches, but for these kids and in the community, this is something that, you know, they'll talk about uh, for a long time. So it's exciting. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy for our kids and our community and especially the coach and staff that's, you know, going to put up with me all the time. So. So what um, what do you think about summer so far? Hot, <laughs> it's <laughs> hot. No, it's been it's been great. You know, um, our kids. You know, they're they're not like uh, maybe Metro kids. We have a lot going on. Our our kids want to be here. You know, they're they want to be here working out and working. You know, they're they're mad when the weight room's not open. So. That's a that's a good problem to have. Uh, one of those great things about being in South Georgia and being in a small town is sometimes um, there's not as much to do for the kids. So what they do is sports. And you know, we have a lot of kids that play two and three and even some play four sports. So, you know, there's always something going on up here in the summertime um, up here at school. So um, I love it. I, it, it's my passion. I love being around these kids every day. I love um, seeing these kids progress as little scrawny uh, ninth graders tripping all over themselves and to turn into, you know, nice, fine young men uh, by the time they leave here with us. It's it's fun to, to see them develop as, as players and people as well. So as the son of a high school coach, when you were, when you were little, did y'all move around a lot or did your dad stay? I mean, was, did, was he at the same school most of your, when you were little, uh, I mean, or did y'all you know, have to we, move around we, a lot? We too? moved around quite a bit. We moved around quite a bit. My wife and I were actually talking about this day. And I was like, this is being here at Telfair. This is the longest I've ever lived in a place. Um, because we, uh, you know, we were in Tallahassee, we're in Mariana, we've been in Panama City, um, uh, we had been in Pensacola before, uh, mainly the Panhandle, but uh, like I said, I, I went to high school in Ocala. Um, they had been in Keystone Heights for a while, so we moved around a, a good little bit growing up or whatever. Um, so, um, you know, we just kind of made McCray our home. Um, we moved around a little bit. As you know, as a young coach trying to, you know, find the way or whatever. But you know, we we love it here and everything. So, but you know, as, as growing up, you know, being that coach, it was uh, almost like the military families. You know, you never know where you could be in two, three, four years. So, but uh, we were we were a very tight knit family. So it's one of those things. As as home was wherever the family was at, it didn't necessarily matter where we were as as long as we were all together. So. Um, I had a great, great upbringing, two great parents, um, you know, so it didn't, it didn't really bother me. I know some people that bother whatever, but, uh, you know, as long as we had sports and we had family, we were good. So did you play anything else or were you just a football guy? 
Uh, I, I played baseball and, and basketball. Um, baseball, I loved. I loved playing baseball. Now, we played all the sports, but when in high school, those are the three things I played. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure my dad invented Frisbee golf before there was Frisbee golf because <laughs> when you're out in the panhandle of Florida, which is like South Georgia, there ain't a whole lot to do. So here we are. Here's the first hole, the pine tree, 100 yards to your left, throw it at it, here we go. You know, so we were making up games. Um, but, you know, we we played everything we could think of um, growing up. But, you know, I played football, baseball, and, and basketball growing up. And I just I, – I love sports. I love playing sports. I love coaching sports. I love watching kids play sports. You know, my daughter plays tennis, so I um, love watching that and seeing her – run around doing that. So I'm just, uh, I guess I'm just a sports nut. I, I love working with kids, uh, through sports. Yeah, no, I've talked to a lot of guys out of Florida. And when I ask that question, they, they look at me and you, I mean, you can hear the incredulity in their voice. They're like, what? No, man, we played everything. We didn't have a choice. You know, <laughs> I'm like, well, I man, I'm just trying to throw that out there that when we were coming up, you know, it was, yeah, you played whatever was in season. You know, it was there wasn't the specialization of you know. No, no, not like now. We have now, and then I mean, even it's 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 bled over into the smaller schools. Like we both coach at single A programs, and you would think that you know, I mean, most of them play two, but very rarely do you have one that plays year round something. You know, more than two, like plays all three. Or or runs track instead of baseball. You know, they'll play football, basketball, and run track. Yeah. that's right you know it, it's tough but uh, we we encourage i think uh, our principal said that we have like 75 percent of our student body involved in some type of extracurricular activity whether it's a sport or band or you know some type of club or activity or whatever which is great um to get these kids involved in this because the more sports they play the less time they have to get in trouble absolutely so. idle hands are the devil's workshop isn't that what they <laughs> say <laughs> That's what they say. That I think it holds true. <laughs> oh yeah, get them something to do. Get them involved. Plus, it just—I mean, think about this. I mean, you can speak to this after the year y'all had last year. School morale. I mean, how fired up were the Trojans last year? And I'm not talking about just the football players. Just the community, the people, the teachers, the the random Brando kids at lunch when y'all were on that run. You know, I mean, when people ask you about. You know, what's the most important thing that happens all year? I'm sorry, it's football because it's the first thing that happens all year. And if you have a good football season, odds are your school year is going to go pretty good because they're the leaders of your school, more than likely. And if they're acting right and they're doing right and they have a good year, it kind of, you know, sets the, the tone for the rest of the year. Yeah, and if you think about it on a Friday night, particularly in a school like ours, You've got the football team, which is going to be somewhere between, you know, 45 to 60 kids. You've got the cheerleaders out there. You've got the band out there. Um, a lot of times, at least at ours, you know, the, the softball team is out there because they're, um, you know, selling something, doing a raffle or whatever. Cross-country team um, is also usually a lot of the band kids, but they're out there too. So, I mean, every Friday night, you have the majority of the student body involved some way. Uh, you know, in that stadium in there. And then plus you all the parents and and relatives that come as well. And then you have just some of the business people. So, um, you know, it was everybody was excited um, because, it, you know, it was just it was just fun. You know, they they enjoyed it and everything. But, you know, people around town were, you know, were hooting and hollering and excited and, you know, banners up everywhere because, you know, we have we have a good cross country team. We have a, a a good softball team, and then so the whole fall sports was was rocking and rolling, and then, you know led into the um the winter time, and then finished off our our girls. Um, you know, we're state runner up in tennis. So, like you said, though, it kind of kicks off the kicks off the school year uh, and gets everybody rolling. But like it, it was exciting. We we loved it. The community loved it, and the student body loved it as well. Well, going back through your career and, and the people that you work for, and and I'm not going to speak for you and say he was the most influential, you know, outside of your father that you right. coached with, but um, I'm glad to know that you worked for the legendary and worked with Coach Butch Brooks. 
Tell yeah. us, tell us some just stuff about Coach Brooks because for the younger guys out there that may have never heard of him, he was in fact a legend. Oh, he he was a legend. I, obviously, uh, if he's not in the Georgia Hall of Fame, he should be because uh, he he was that good. But he influenced so many uh, young coaches. Uh, he gave me my first uh, ass chewing. <laughs> uh, out of out of school, I remember we were getting ready for a golf tournament, and I had forgot some gift bags or something, so I had to uh, hightail it back to the office and grab those. And you know, he gave me he gave me a good one, and uh, I took it like a champ and everything. But he also, too, at the same time, would let you know that he loved you, and he would he would do anything for you whatsoever. Um, you know, when I decided to. Um, you know, get into high school ball. He was the one making calls, helping me find somewhere to go. And then when my dad got sick and I wanted to move down the coast, he's the one picking up the phone and, uh, you know, calling people for me. So, uh, you know, he, he was, he was a good one. And, and, uh, he would, like I said, he would coach you hard. Uh, just like I was one of his players, he would coach me hard. You know, he would love you hard. And, you know, we, we had a lot of great times, uh, been in the office and then in his mountain house and, you know, at his home. Um, he, uh, he, he loved, uh, he loved to have a good time. And he, like I said, he was, he was gonna, uh, he was gonna work you hard, but he always, he always took care of you too at the same time. So, um, I, I always owe a lot of my career to, uh, you know, the influence that, uh, that he had and how he helped me, you know, continue on after I left tech. But, He's one of those great ones. And also, you know, the, the last year I was in there, when he slid over to operations, uh, Bob Griffith came in. Yeah, Griff. Uh, yeah, Griff. So I, I was wondering Griff. where the timing was on that because I remember when yeah. Griff became the, the – Yep. So talk about two legends in the same office that – and I, I, my favorite thing was because I would help him out with the coaches clinic when they'd have those and to sit in the hospitality room – with Coach Brooks and Coach Griff and all their buddies that are Georgia high school legends, just to sit in there and listen to them talk ball and just talk you know, life and all that was just so invaluable of, uh, you know, how to do things and how to run a program. I would just sit in the corner and, and listen and learn because it was, it was a house full of legends there. Yeah, those were the old heads that raised us. That's right. Yeah, you know, we know, talk think, about think, old heads. Those are the old heads. Yeah, and those those are the the Georgia high school legends that you see when you're reading through the Georgia high school daily email in the mornings, and you see all those wins. You know, just sitting in a room full of all those guys and everything they've been through. Um, you know, you couldn't you couldn't learn enough from those guys. Yeah, I mean, Coach Pilcher, Coach Miller, Coach yep. Griff, Coach Brooks, and they, and they were all best friends. You know, they were mm-hmm. all. You know, I remember one year we were at the clinic and, you know, me and Kevin Stevenson were just sitting over doing whatever. And Coach Pilcher was like, hey, why don't y'all come sit over here with us? And we did. And he was like, why don't you younger guys ever come hang out with us? Uh, because you're you. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. We're scared to death. Of, you know, you're a legend. Why would you want? We're not, we're not trying to bother you. Oh, we're just regular guys. And then when you got sitting around and listening to them, they were. They didn't care. <laughs> it never crossed their mind that that's the way the younger guys looked at them. You know, they were so humble. They were just like, we don't care. <laughs> you know, it's whatever. So yep. cool. And then so, you know, Don Norton is his son-in-law. Right. Uh, so that's how I got to know Don through him. Um, you know, so – and, you know, now, now Don's one of the old heads. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. Uh, you know, he's heading to, like, year 32 or 33, something like that. And, you know, he's he's a legend in his own right. But, yeah, I need to uh, get him on, too. Oh, yeah. You, tell, you want to hear some good stories now. He, he can tell you some good ones there. but Because uh, he's been I, at Johnson I, I can, County for a minute. That's Yeah, he, he's been there, uh, I think, over 20 years, you know, both as an assistant with Bill Bonds and and then a head coach himself. Um, he, he'd been there um, – I want to say he's like closing in on year 20 as head coach over there. Um, but just, you know, I, I've been so uh, thankful of all the coaches that have been around, both the head coaches that I've worked for and some of the assistants I've been around that are now head coaches. 
and even some of the assistants that aren't head coaches but are just great human beings and great coaches in their own right, um, just learning from them about life, not just X's and O's, but everything in general. So uh, definitely been very fortunate in in that aspect of uh, my career so far. Well, did you ever envision – I don't know if this is a fair question, but did you ever envision your first head coaching job turning into a 12-year, going into your 13 stint at one place? I, honestly, I didn't think so. I, I you know, because um, you know how you're, volatile you're, it is now. I mean, you figure, right? Man, if I can get four or five years out of this, you know, maybe it'll turn into something else, or they'll run me off, or I'll, you know. So, right. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I heard uh, the one that you did with Coach Ford, uh, which another legend. Um, I was listening to him, and it's something that uh, he had said that uh, him and uh, Terrence Banks were talking about. And he said, you know, don't chase, don't chase the players, don't chase the facilities, and and things like that. Chase the the admin because if you're aligned with the admin, you can make some things happen. Well. We have some great admin here. Uh, the the principal that hired me uh, here, uh, Damon Ray, who's now principal at Hancock Central, great one. Uh, we he and I had coached together before, um, so he's an old football coach. Um, you know he knows. And then uh, Eric Cowart, who was um, a coach on the Hawkinsville staff when they made that run, you know way back when I think that was the early two thousands over there. Um, you know, he was, he was on that staff. He's our principal. Now our superintendent, uh, Leonard Harrelson is an old coach himself and loves sports in general. So we have, um, some outstanding admin that love the aspect of the student athlete and they understand, uh, the importance that, uh, athletics has on your school climate and, and school success. So, um, that's, you know, one of the biggest reasons why, you know, we fell in love with this place as our admin over the years has been so great. Well, I'm sure with the success you've had there, people have come knocking, you've had other opportunities. What's, what's kept you there? I mean, other than just loving it there. Um, you know, it just, uh, you know, it just feels like we felt like God led us here. You know, there's been opportunities along the way, but just felt like this is where God wanted us to be. You know, sometimes, uh, things happen where, um, you just, you just end up staying somewhere. You don't quite understand it at the time, but then maybe a couple of years down the road, you understand why that happened and things like that. Um, <clears throat> so we, we've been we've been very fortunate to be able to stay here and you know build this program from literally the ground um, to where we're at now. You know now the goal is to you know con- continue to sustain that success. But um, it's just it's a it's a great community. Um, I like, I like the small town feel, um, you know, they, they look out for their own and, you know, are, it's a safe place to be. Uh, the family's happy, uh, you know, wife's a teacher and, you know, she loves it where she's at. And like I said, the admin has been great. The, the community is great. And, uh, so just feels like where God, God wants us to be right now. So, um, let's see. Unless he tells me tonight uh, to go somewhere else, we don't plan on going anywhere. But uh, now we we love it here. Like I said, the people have been been great to us, and uh, we don't we don't plan on going anywhere. Well, you're in a you're in a very unique situation of being in one place at one time because a lot of times, you know, I'll ask guys, you know, over the years how things changed or whatever. But you can literally just look at what, where you've been for twelve years. In those twelve years. You know, what have you noticed about just the game? Not 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 the X's and O's, just the game of high school football. You know, what what's what's changed that you're like, man, this uh, this ain't like it was twelve years ago. Yeah, uh what well, kind of we talked about, you know, there, there's a lot of uh different rules now with uh the contact policies. Um, you know, there's the heat policies, um the, I guess, more emphasis on the concussion awareness and things, you know, um, certain it hasn't quite, there's a few things that have kind of trickled down to high school, but like, you know, you can't uh, just with a defenseless receiver, you got to make sure you wrap and stuff like that. So, you know, teaching those things and make sure they understand the whys of it and, 
and and the the rules of it that have changed since then and the old the old wet bulb uh, uh those the the person that designed that we need to have a talk because those are <laughs> those wet bulbs are obscene looking um <laughs> But, uh, you know, making sure that you, you, know, you keep track of those things. Because I remember when I was in high school or even when I first started coaching, you know, we'd have three days with very few water breaks. And, and you know, there was, no, there was no heat policies or contact policies or anything like that. But I think the game's kind of changed a little bit because the kids have kind of changed. They're a little bit more sedentary with the, um, you know, with all the, the games and the phones and the internet and things like that or whatever, um, where, you know, we were always outside and we didn't want to come inside cause we did. Mama was going to put us to work with some chores. So right. only time we came inside was for some lunch and then go back outside. Um, but it's kind of changed like that, but you know, we, we train our kids, um, hard and, and, uh, we you know within the, within the confines of the rules and things like that, but that's probably the biggest thing is just kind of how these rules that have been added. And now, you know, the, you know, the NILs and, um, and transferring and things like that, you know, there, there's no NILs in, um, uh, in McCray, Georgia, we might get you a two piece chicken box, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> something like that. Now, if you're really good, we might get you a blizzard at Dairy Queen, but, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Some of these signings and things like that you hear about some of these kids that ain't that ain't happening in McCray, Georgia. Yeah, but, that's uh, the stuff you don't really have to worry about when you're in rural middle of South Georgia. Is no, nah, they're not going nah, anywhere. Nah. They're not. <laughs> they're not coming in. They're not going. No, nah, nobody's moving <laughs> to McCray, Georgia. They're not so, necessarily. Uh, they're probably not going anywhere. They're not getting you know post or you know. They're not playing. But that, on, that's whatever. fun too, though, in the aspect that you know most of these kids. Now we've been here so long that uh, the kids that are going to be seniors were my wife's first group when she went back to work. So, like, we know all these kids since the time they started elementary school. So, you know, they've all grown up together. They played together. You know, we know them. We've known them since they were itty bitty. Uh, so there's something to be said for, you know, growing up around the same people. And it's almost like, you know, they're, they're your brothers because you've, you've played rec ball together in middle school and now, you know, high school. So, um, and that, when you're in a small town, you all go to church together. You all, you know, it, it's like going back in time. I've tried to explain that to people and they, sometimes they look at me horrified or, or, you know, crazy. I'm like, yeah, I mean, if, if your child gets away from you at the local dollar gentral, you can yell at somebody and tell them to grab them, and it can be anybody of any nationality, creed, race, age. It don't matter. They're That's their right. child, too. Oh. They will snatch your child up <laughs> and deliver them back to you. That, because that, and there's everybody something to be said for that because, you know, you worry about certain things, and, you know, everybody, you know, most everybody in town knows who my daughter is. So, you know, uh Bless her heart, she ain't able to get away with anything. So, <laughs> and, that, and that ain't a bad thing. That ain't a bad thing either. But uh, you know, it, but it, you know, you feel comfortable. You can you can turn your child loose at a ball game and not have to worry about it, or you know, you know, something like that. We don't have to worry about happen. Not not that it can't, but you know, right. uh, you feel a lot safer, you know, with that. So there's something to be said. There, like I said, there's there's great things about metro, and there's great things about small towns. Just whatever. Um, you know, that person's flavor is right. And then as far as, you know, over the years, 12 years within the coaching profession, what have you noticed, you know, what, what's different about, you know, the next crop of coaches coming through now, the younger guys out there listening, what's, what's some things you could pass on to them that, that we could help them with. The biggest thing is just, just come in and listen and work. You know, uh, don't worry about titles or or things like that. So many people are, are chasing titles so soon where, uh, you know, I remember as a GA, you know, staying up till three or four o'clock in the morning, uh, redoing breakdowns when the system crashed or going and getting people's dinners or dip or Coke or make the coffee before the meeting, or, you know, picking people up from the airport, whatever is required. It just kind of teaches you that, that work ethic and being part of a, 
of a family and a group and a working organization, just learning that first before you try to tell somebody what you know of X's and O's. Um, just listen and learn. And like you said, I've been here for so long now. Uh, one of my former quarterbacks is back with me now coaching. So, uh, you know, that's exciting too um, because now they have played under me. They know our expectations. They know our system. So um, that's that's going to be fun and, um, and exciting. And we got a couple of kids that are going off in college right now that are studying to be, you know, teachers and coaches. So in the next couple of years, you know, hopefully they'll come back to us and, and that'll be fun too, where you've been there to that point where it, I guess it won't be too long before I'll start coaching some of our former players, kids. So, um, that's probably why I've got mainly gray hair now because they've, <laughs> they've, they've worn me out. I'm getting old. So, Well, would, uh, staying on the, on the same vein of helping out the younger guys, since you've been in one place for as long as you have, it's just, I haven't had anybody that, you know, so far that has been in, <clears throat> been where they are now for as long as you have, which is awesome. What, um, up at about what year would you say, like how long did it take you to get it to where the everybody could just walk in and you just looked at each other and nodded and everybody just knew, all right, this is how things get set up. This is how we run practice. This is what, you know, and you didn't have to worry about, you know what I mean? Everything kind of started running itself as far as structurally. Well, yeah. Um, about about, said, about well, like, which I, year did you think that happened? Five, six, I would, I would say, I would say about six. Cause now I've pretty much the last six, seven years have had the same staff, give or take one, uh, but they've been in the system. We've just moved them up from the middle school or whatever, but they've been in the system. Now they, they know, they know me, they know the expectations. They know what we're looking for in the program the kids know it now too um sometimes you know when a college coach is coming in and i'm kind of talking with them or whatever they'll go ahead and get started the workout without <laughs> without me and uh you know and get rolling but you know it's at the same time that's what you want you know um the kids know the expectation they know what you want done um so they go and get it done but like i said we've got a great staff we work well together um and like I said, they, they know what we're trying to accomplish. They know what we want on a daily basis. So, um, you know, uh, like I'd probably say about halfway through, like, like year six or seven, because I think we've pretty much, this last staff we have has pretty much been together, I want to say, the last six or seven years, which that's another big thing is continuity. Um, you know, when you have the majority of your staff together for a long time, um, they know what you're thinking. They know uh, what you want in the situation, which to me is neat when you can ask a coach, let me see if you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking, and pretty much spot on. Uh, that makes it fun when, you know, they they know kind of what you had in your thought and your mind anyway. So um, that that's that's been a big thing to be able to, to keep these guys here uh and it's it's good for the kids too because they have so much change in their own lives but to have those same adults there with them throughout their high school career um is is good for them developing as young men as well because i know that our, uh, i know a lot of schools do this but our seniors i'm not sure how long we've been doing this but they give these golden apples out at the end of the year. And I know a lot of times because our coaches are so tight with the kids, a lot of our coaches and not just football, but all sports coaches here, they get a lot of those kids uh, golden apples on that last day because of, you know, what they've meant to them over their, their four years. So, you know, hats off to all of our coaches for, you know, for what they do for these kids because they need that continuity in their life. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I I just will. I'm just glad you touched on that because I want young guys out there to understand that it, it it don't happen overnight. And 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 administrators out there, anybody that might be listening, you got to give you got to give these coaches time. 
to get it. And it's not a two to three year deal. And now, you know, with society the way it is and everybody wants results now, we're talking about 14 to 18 year old youngins. You know, and, yeah, that, and you don't have the resources thing. of like a college, you know, whatever. <laughs> we're dealing with kids. I mean, you can't just go out and buy a team and put them together and throw them out there and, oh, you're not getting it done. You're fired. You know. Yeah, right. But that that's, you know, it comes in with, the you know, having a great admin that understands what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish and, you know, building it the, you know, the right way or whatever and, and surrounding yourself with some some excellent young men that, you know, see the vision and, and what you're trying to accomplish. And of course, you know, having some, some good players throughout the years, that always, that always helps and makes you look a little bit better than what you, you may be. Yeah. Jimmy's and Joe's do help. And y'all have, That's had, right. y'all have had a run of them here in the past few years for sure. Cause I know when you said y'all were playing Macon County, you know, they were in our region. Manchester was in our region. Because I was like, who y'all got next week? Macon County. Okay, y'all will be all right. You know, that's going to be a tough one. You know, that'll be a good game. Who y'all get if y'all win that game? Probably Manchester. Oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like, it's like we finished our season with uh, Sly, Macon, Manchester. All right, made the playoffs. Sweet. Who y'all got first round? Bowden. Oh. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> yeah, and people – People outside of Georgia or even people in Metro that don't maybe quite know about South Georgia, the amount of talent and dudes in Class A football is ridiculous. I think I was looking at something the other day where there was like five guys in the state of Georgia from Class A programs that were in top 50 nationally. Uh, recruits, or whatever. So there, there is some. I know it's smaller schools and and smaller teams and things like that. But there is some tremendous football uh, down here south of Macon. Um, yeah, people that, think uh, that in single A and double A, you only have like there's one kid that's just on the team and he's just so much better than everybody else. Well, yeah, they'll have one guy, but the really really good teams, the Brooks Counties, <laughs> you know, when Coach Freeman. Was I mean it's going to stay that way? But Coach Freeman was there and had it, you know, rocking and rolling and Clinch and you know the region you're talking about with Clinch and Charlton and Wilcox and those guys. Yeah, they'll 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 have one dude, dude, but they'll have about six that anybody in Metro would take today. You know, that, any yeah, big program right. would take that they could play for anybody. And you know, you're you're still playing with about you might have forty or fifty on your team or thirty five or forty <laughs> on the team. But you're still really only playing with about eighteen. That's right. But them eighteen can go. Yeah, there there's some there's some more daddies on these fields on Friday nights. There's I said there's some there's some great players and when you when you hear about it and um I, I know it's hard sometimes for coaches, especially with the new rule they have. Uh but when when they come through here, they're like, Man, there's a lot of great players down here. It's just, you know, you have to be willing to drive thirty exactly. forty. 50 minutes and if if you're willing to do that you can really find some great ones and i understand that you know in atlanta you can hit you know 10 15 schools in a five mile radius i get it um but the ones that come down here you know that want the south georgia kids they really they really come finding some good ones down here so um that that's that's kind of what i love about the small town football too is these kids man they don't they don't know anything but just just working yeah, when I work the hospitality suite at the at the clinics and I sit in there and those college coaches come in there, I'm already an idiot. And being self-actualized, I don't care what other people think about me. And I already know that my career is pretty much over. You know, I'm at the in the twilight of it. And, you know, so I don't care. I'm not trying to get another job. I'm not I'm not gonna be a head coach. I'm not I have no interest in any of that. And it's not like colleges are going to hire me to do anything. So I don't really care. So I just tell them, I, you know, and it may let make me look like a bigger idiot. I don't care. And I just tell them if I was at a directional college, Northeast, Southwest, East, this, West, that, whatever. And I was a mid-major or, you know, power, not group of five or whatever they're going to be called now, group of five school. I draw a line under making all the way to the Mississippi River. Go down to I hit about the Florida Keys. I wouldn't even fool with Atlanta. 
you're you don't need to recruit. You're not recruiting against Georgia anyway. You know that's right. You're not going to win that. You're you're not recruiting against Florida and all those other D one programs. Hit these small. Get on. Get in your car and recruit like they used to in the old days. And you can find kids in our area that can come to your little ookie bookie university that you can't get nowhere else that will qualify, come play for you, and make you better. That's right. Because I mean, you just you can get on uh, three nineteen or four forty one or two eighty, and I mean, you can hit you know Wilcox, Turner. You got Irwin, Clinch, Charlton, Fitzgerald, Tiff. You know, you got, and then you can dip into the big boys with Colquitt, Lyons, Valdosta, Lee County. Of course, you know, we talked about Brooks. I mean, there, yeah, there's Thomasville, so many, Worth. I Thomas, mean. Yeah. I mean, there's so many great programs and coaches and players down here. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's just, it blows my mind. And I'm like, I mean, I get it. I get the convenience. I understand. And now with the transfer portal and all that other stuff, they're not really recruiting our kids anyway, unless he's a nationally ranked five star, you know, whatever. And it's just going to trickle down and have more of a negative effect on our kids. And it makes us look like bozos like, Oh, you're not trying to get my kid recruited. And you're like, dude, look, your kid might've could have played at a mid major years ago but now you know he's gonna have to go to you know d2 or you know you know a smaller place and transfer i guess i mean i don't know i don't even i don't i wouldn't even know what to tell a parent now as far as that goes if their kid was an excellent high school you know excellent high school football player i wouldn't know what to tell them yeah it that that whole game you know has changed or whatever and you got to the coaches too, not just the college coaches, but the high school coaches have to kind of change their way and approach, both with the college coaches and you know with the parents and kids, and explain to them, you know how how different it is and how much harder it is, and you know how much game ready you got to be because the years of you know bringing a lineman in and developing them for two or three years and stuff like that, you know they want to the big guys want to want them you know ready to go, and that's partly because they know they're only going to get two, maybe three years to win or they're fired. So, you know, it's a trickle down effect to, to everybody. Well, let's wrap up with some funny, some fun stuff. What, who was the best (coughs) or some of the best that you've seen coached against? Who's probably some, who, who are a few of the best players you've coached against? Uh, best players. I mean, you, (laughs) There's you had you had DJ Lundy, uh, you know, over in Irwin, who's now uh, at Florida at Florida State, um, you know, and he played for you know the late Buddy Nobles, uh, you know, there who they had a great run. Uh, you can name a whole slew of Clinch County players uh, that have gone Division One over there uh, with uh, when Jim Dickerson was in charge. Of course, now he's he's back in charge there. Um, Turner County always had some studs. Um, uh, trying to think of the guys, and they Ontario Wilson, and there was another one that they both played at Florida State. Uh, and there was a guy at Wilcox named Nick Marshall. He wasn't a bad. Yeah, player. he was okay. You know. Yeah, he he, he was okay. He wasn't bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he he was he was all right. Uh, I remember when we were at Glen Academy. We were playing, um, I think Cannon might have touched on this or whatever. We're playing the old Creekside, Kevin Whitley, the coach, and there was a there was a guy named Eric Berry there that was playing safety and quarterback. Yeah, I got I was in the yeah. region with him. I was at Lithia Springs then. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't terrible. Yeah, yeah, he uh he was he was pretty good. Let me tell you uh, my Eric Berry story. After the game, after he had rushed for nine hundred yards and threw for a mile and a half. After the game, he has his helmet under his arm, looked everybody in the face, shook your hand, and very succinctly and politely shook your hand, said, great game, as if to say, I enjoyed kicking the crap out of you, Coach. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, he was just so well-spoken, carried himself so well as a as a young kid, you know. And, That's he, right. and he, I mean, besides his athletic ability, you just knew the way he carried himself. You were like, oh, this kid's going to make it. I don't care if he plays football. This kid might be president one day. I mean, you know, he's yeah. just, he just, he, he had it. 
Yeah, we uh, when I was at Glen Academy, we went against Darius Slay. Yeah, he which, wasn't bad. Kevin W. Stevenson yeah. coached him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, however, we uh, would have some battles in track because he ran track, and then uh, myself, Coach Veal, we did track along with uh, Kevin. Did it over at Brunswick, so um, we pretty much practiced and ran meets with each other almost every day. So um, we've we've seen some some great players that have uh, you know had great high school careers, college careers, and then. Several of them have even gone on and had very successful pro careers. So, and uh, a lot of those were at small schools. But the uh, the coaches, the dudes that we've gone against, you know, down here, uh, you know, you know, Vaughn. We've we've played Bleckley with with Vaughn over at Bleckley. You know, like I said, Buddy Nobles, uh, Hall of Famer Rich McWhorter over at Charlton. Uh, you know, there's there's been some some great ones over the years that we've had the opportunity to, to coach against. And sometimes those have ended well, and sometimes they've ended not so well. Well, but, how about uh, that you've coached? <clears throat> um, probably, uh, here or just in general? No, just over the – I mean, anywhere. Well, just the best you've coached. Uh, well, uh, just talking about here, uh, we've had uh, Abraham Freeman, who was um, – Oh, I only got to coach him for one year. I wish I'd have got to have him for more than that. He was just kind of an athletic freak. Um, but uh, you know, he got to play. I've had uh, several here. They've been pretty good. There was a kid named uh, Richie Rich, like the cartoon character uh, that uh, played for us at Wheeler when I was with Chuck Goddard. He was a running back. He had signed with North Carolina. He was he was one of the fastest kids I've ever seen. I mean, he was even. You know, everybody in Atlanta's fast, and he he was fast in Atlanta. So uh, <laughs> he was uh, he was a, a special talent up there, and you know, he would he would make your uh, play calling look good, and he would make your linemen look real good if they happened to to mess up on something. He was he was some good ones uh, there. Um, but there's there's just so many that uh, I don't know. Maybe I consider them great players. Uh, but um, everybody else wouldn't. But I just I kind of remember all of them just, you know, from here, whatever that we've had go that um, I thought they were special players for here, um, you know, that have have gone on and had some good, solid college careers that uh, one of the best ones. And uh, you probably remember when we threw um, if he would only been taller, he might have been like the next Tim Tebow. That was Ian Blankenship. Um he was a good one here. He was a heck of a wrestler, um, baseball player. He was a heck of a football player. We always joked around with him that he was like a fullback that could throw because he was about <laughs> five nine, yeah. 190 pounds and could run a little bit. But um, he could throw I remember, the crap out of the football. <laughs> yeah, he could throw. He could throw. I remember one coach uh, arguing with us in a um, seven on seven. He's like, nobody goes empty. Uh, inside the five yard line, I was like, Coach, you got to pull up some of our tape because uh, that's what we're doing. And because uh, we basically were, it was like a wildcat capability without it. He ended up having an all American career at the Merchant Marine Academy um, up in New York. And now he's making stupid money working six months out of the year um, doing that. So he's had a very successful career so far whatever um you know he was only about five nine if he would have been probably you know six foot or six one he would have had you know a lot more opportunities but he sure was fun to watch and he made he made play calling on friday nights a whole lot easier well that's awesome i sure do enjoy watching teams that you coach they're always hard nosed they always get after it and first 12 years that it, it it tell fair. I'm sure the next 12 are going to be fantastic as well. I appreciate you being on with me. Appreciate your friendship over the, the years. And, and I just can't wait to see, you know, coming off the semifinal appearance, see y'all take the next step and, and finish the drill on that. You know, it's just long time coming and, and people have been seeing it coming. I mean, it's been building for the past three or four years. And that's a testament to you and your staff and your vision and just you and the impact you've had on not only the community, but the young people of uh, Telfair County. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I thank you uh, for, for thinking of me and, 
and have me on here. And I, I just enjoy listening to all those other guys uh, that you've had on here. It's it's fun to you know you can listen to the X's No podcast, but get on and just hear some of these legends in uh, the state of Georgia come on and and talk about their careers or stories. Uh, it's been fun to listen to. So I, I appreciate you thinking of me and, and allowing me to spend some time on here talking talking life and ball with you. Well, thanks so much for being on, Coach. And if you ever need anything, you know how to get with me. Will do. I appreciate you.